What a beautiful, beautiful day. Oh, no, no, absolutely not. You can, you can go, you can leave. Go, we did this bit last week. We did this bit last week. Not, not doing this again, okay? I put out like five videos last week. You can relax now. I, I did everything that, that you needed me to do, okay, Papa? You can, you can leave me alone now. I just want to be in my pool and enjoy my time. I just wanted to say hi. I didn't know that. That made me kind of feel bad. I don't like when I make you feel bad. I'm sorry. You kind of hurt my feelings. You want to like grab some Pizza Hut after this? Uh, no, don't, don't be, don't give me that look. Don't, don't look at me like that. Hey, you know what? If you really want me to make a video, I'll, I'll make a video. Really? I'll, I'll make a great video and you'll, you'll love it. It'll be great. It'll be funny and we can go get like pizza after, you know? I don't like that. <laughs> Alright, I'll get out of the pool, I'll dry off and I'll, I'll go make a video about like superstars or something. Alright, I know you had that, that interview the other day. Ha ha ha, thank you, Ricardo. Alright, bye. Oh wait, that son of a bitch, he got me again! Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Speed Super Sonic, for you guys another video. And in this video today, we are back again to talk more about all things Sonic Superstars because we actually have something that nobody's talking about right now. I haven't seen this on Sonic Twitter. I haven't seen anybody make a YouTube video about this. This is just information that has been out for a while. Nobody's talking about. There is an entire Sonic Superstars interview with Takashi Zuka himself, and it's very, very extensive, giving a lot of information that a lot of people just don't know about because it dropped on June 23rd, which is not only Sonic's birthday, but so much stuff happened that day. There was the Sonic Central, already other news and interviews are coming out about superstars. You have the Frontiers drop, the Prime trailer. So much stuff was going on that day. So this kind of got drowned out and like kind of lost in the, the ether. And I thought we want to keep track of all things superstars. So without any further ado, let's dive into this interview. This is very big, very extensive, like I said. So this is going to be a lot of information, a lot of new info. So you're going to want to strap in, stick around for all of it. Let's go. Oh, my phone is at 4%. Yeah, um, I should probably charge this. I'll be right back. Two hours later. <sighs> a lot, I was taking a sh Interview, how Sonic Superstars was born from a Zoom drinking party. Sonic creative officer Takashi Yuzuka explains why the next side-scrolling game needed to leave retro behind. I very much so agree. Wow, very, very smart take there, Yuzuka. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. I know, I'm hyping you up a little bit. Yeah, you can go in the other room now, you can stop looking at me. For years, Sega seemed to struggle to figure out what Sonic the Hedgehog games could be in the modern era. The tussle between trying to appeal to hardcore fans and expand to a new, younger audience led to countless awkward compromises as the Blue Hedgehog attempted to please everybody at once, speeding through familiar courses in one moment, then transitioning into a werewolf in the neck. Hey, shut the f up! You, you guys have an exclusive interview and the first thing you do is dunk on like my second favorite Sonic game of all time? G, G thank you. If they said like forces, I'd been like, yeah, that's perfectly understandable. But anyways, in comparison, recent games feel far more assured. Sonic Mania is the mascot's best side-scrolling game since the 90s, while Sonic Frontiers did a largely successful job of bringing the template to a large open world 3D environment for the first time. By alternating its casual and hardcore games, Sonic Team seems to have found a rhythm that works. This year's game, Sonic Superstars, attempts to take the classic feel of Sonic Mania and update it with modern visuals and drop-in, drop-out co-op. Crucially, it's also the first game in over 20 years attached to Sonic's original character character designer Naya Toshima, who's leading development with his studio Artzist. Arzest? There we go. Zest. At Summer Games Fest, VGC sat down with Sonic Creative Officer Takashi Zuka to discuss the new entry and hear the story of how it's conceptualized during a Zoom drinking party. Guys, Takashi Zuka? He drinks. Who's working on the game? Sonic Team appears to be partnering with Arzest, but are you collaborating with Head Cannon or Christian Whitehead says Retro Engine at all? When we were making Sonic Mania and the game was finished and Chris was done, we had a conversation with Chris and the team about what the next 2D game we make should be. We had some concepts and ideas laid out between the teams, but we couldn't kick off the project. And so it disappeared for a while with Chris and the team. I'm friends with a lot of my old co-workers and I was having a conversation with Oshima-san about how we can make a Sonic game together and if he'd be interested. He's the original creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, so we had a conversation about whether his company, RSS, would be interested in working on a Sonic game. So there were ideas with Chris and the team that fell through. Sonic Superstars is really all developed by RSS, but Sonic Team in Japan is also working with them on design and some other elements. RSS and Oshima-san are 100% developers of the game. It's just so surreal having Oshima-san back. I mean, he's the creator of Sonic. I mean, he's like a legend. And him going through that whole Balan Wonderworld project or whatever, like, I'm just so happy he's like now working on Sonic again and he's back home and really just saying 
saying that like basically everything with Mania has indeed fallen through. So let's continue reading and see if he expands more upon this. The physics in Superstars like in Mania feel incredibly authentic to the original Sonic games. How challenging was implementing that classic feel in a side scroller with 3D elements? When making a new classic Sonic game, what the team felt was most important was recreating that classic experience. So yes, the team could be creating 3D assets for the game, but they needed to have the physics and feel of the game to be just the, the classics. That's what we had Oshima-san's team do at the very beginning. We said, if we can't execute on that feeling, then we shouldn't be doing this project. That was really the turning point for the project. The team at Arzest were focused on looking at the classic gameplay and recreating that with 3D assets. When they were able to do that, that was the starting point where we said, okay, we have a game that plays and looks like the classic games. How can we add new features on top of that? Sonic Team seemed to struggle for years to recreate that classic feel with its modern 2D games until Mady and nailed it. The Superstar Journey technology. I love how it's just like, yeah, you guys have been kind of up lately. How to have that change? No, it's completely built from scratch. The team at Arzus are really, really good at making 2D games. They've previously made 2D games for Nintendo, so that's where their core competencies lie. When Oshima-san took on the classic Sonic game idea, their team started looking at the classic game side by side to nail the exact movement of the characters from scratch in their own development environment. Why did you ultimately decide to make this game after your conversations with Christian Whitehead rather than a Sonic Mania sequel? This is gonna be big. I'm excited for this response. Sonic Mania is one of those games that's built with that classic design, and I was personally working closely with Christian Christian, headcanon, and everyone involved with that. The whole idea behind Mania was to make a game for the core fans. That's why it's called Sonic Mania, because it's for the Mania fanbase. I'm assuming when he says Mania fanbase, he means like me. For people who are hardcore fans of the game, they're fine with how it is in pixelated graphics, but when we looked outside of that group, they might look at it as a retro game or a rehash. Even though it was brand new content, some people put it in the retro box. A very true. I didn't want 2D Sonic to just be retro gameplay. I wanted it to appeal to new audiences, so it really needs to look unique and like something like a modern casual person would see and say, oh, that's a new game. It also needed content that a non-hardcore fan would expect from that sort of title. We're taking what people liked from the classic games in the series, putting a new look on top while still keeping the same feel. That is an amazing response, honestly, and totally respectable. I totally agree with the whole pixelated thing. I, I said this before, like, Mania could have been made. 20, 30 years ago, but putting new things, adding brand new features, even more features than Mania had, and all of this stuff into Superstars, I think they're doing a great job with it. The game is visually beautiful, it's obviously not something you could achieve with pixel graphics. It feels like something that could release in 2023 for a $60 price tag. I'm just shocked that Asuka hasn't said anything that I'm just like, why would you say that? You've spoken before about how you feel you needed to split Sonic into 3D and 2D games to appeal to two sets of fans. Can you explain how those two sets of fans differ and how that affects your approach? You're understanding exactly how we're creating content. When we think about Sonic Frontiers, that's the modern game format with the story you can get into a huge world and gameplay for hardcore gamers. <laughs> I love the term gamer. It's really an evolution of the original format. It's something you can sit down with as a solo player and really focus on. But on the flip side, when you think of Sonic Superstars, it's part of the classic series of games, but it has these elements that make it very unique. You don't need to read a manual in order to understand how to play the game. We don't have story sequences where you need to sit down and watch in order to understand what to do next. You can hand the controller over to a very young child and they can immediately figure out how to play the game and how to get to the end. Storytelling is done via character interaction, so it's very easy for them to understand. Classic Sonic fans are going to love Sonic Superstars, but what's also new is it's very suited to families and children too. That's where it's very different from Frontiers, which is a game for hardcore fans. That's very true. This is a very accessible game. I'm assuming it's just going to be rated E. It's very cute. It's very cartoony, colorful, very much so like those original Genesis games. It feels like a proper follow-up, and I think it helps because Oshima-san is working on it. I'm very happy that if we are going to have both they are their own separate entities, they're in their own games, and that there's a distinct difference between the two, the two styles. I think it works great. He is really on a roll. He's giving great answers and a lot of great insight into the behind the scenes of this. This is amazing. I love this. Naoto Oshima is back for what appears to be his first Sonic game since Sonic Adventure over 20 years ago. What did he bring to the project? During the coronavirus lockdown, Oshima-san reached out and we set up a Zoom drinking party connecting America and Japan. We decided to get together and just have some fun. During this conversation, I mentioned that I wanted to make a new 2D Sonic game, and Oshima-san replied, you know what, I think they meant to write me too, but it says met to. That sounds like a really great idea. So it started out as a really casual conversation, ended up being executed on. What Oshima-san really brings is his classic Sonic experience, having worked on Sonic 1 and Sonic CD. He has an understanding on how to make a true classic Sonic game. Christian Whitehead and his team are all 
fans and love the series so much, which is why they were able to make a great classic game. But that's what's also one of the things that Oshima-san brings to the table. He knows how to make a classic Sonic experience. I wouldn't feel confident or comfortable just having some other developer with no experience working on this. That would be like a hurdle that wouldn't come out feeling like a classic Sonic game. So it sounds like Oshima-san is far more involved than just designing a few characters. A lot of people think Oshima-san just came in and thought about what Sonic would look like, drew the character, and that was it. But he was also doing level design on Sonic 1 in addition to drawing and creating the character. So he has that experience of making a Sonic game because he did level design for the original game. So that's very cool and gives me a lot of confidence for the level design in Superstars because one of the biggest conversations around Sonic is the level design of games. And I know like a majority of those conversations surround 3D titles like Forces and stuff like that. And, and level design's gotten much better or wasn't even really that much of conversation in Frontiers because of the kind of game it was being more open format. But then you did have conversation around bad 2D like level design when it came to Forces and like, classic levels and then Sonic 4 and those games. Yeah. So having Oshima-san who's made some of the best Sonic levels ever. Very excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. Will any other classic Sonic devs return? When we talk about people who are still around who worked on the classic Sonic games, there are not a lot of people who are actively creating games left over from that really small group, but there, <laughs> one of them's in jail. But there are three people, myself, Oshima-san, and the third is Jun Sonoi at Sega, who did music for Sonic 3 back in the day. He's also participating in the development of Sonic Superstars. Jun is the music director on the game and is also really focused on making it sound like a classic game. But obviously, he's not just sat around creating all this music himself. He's working with internal teams at Sega to create music in that classic Sonic vibe. And he's also working on some external teams such as T-Lobes, who helped out on Sonic Mania. Superstars is a full price title. Could you give us a sense of how much content is planned for the game? All right, here we go. We can't really speak to all the features at this point because we only just announced it, but stay tuned as we will be revealing more about the game this year. But from my perspective, thinking about what a 2D Sonic game should be, it's definitely hitting the level of content that 2D Sonic games should be. Talking about it being a full price experience, we've since learned that the game is like 12 zones. So whether that was supposed to be in that Nintendo Direct or not, is kind of irrelevant. We know it's going to be around the same length as previous classic 2D Sonic games, so I think we're gonna get some bang for our buck. There's gonna be like single character levels and all of this different stuff, so you're introducing co-op multiplayer with this game. How does the experience differ between solo and multiplayer? And did you have to tweak the classic gameplay to cater for multiplayer? Four-player cooperative multiplayer is like the core base that the game can be played in. It's not like you have to play with four players to get the most out of it or beat certain modes. It's literally that if friends come over to your house while you're playing, they can jump right in and you can continue together. The game will never change. It really is just jump in and jump out co-op. To dig down even deeper into your question, the level design doesn't change when you have more players in the game, but the game experience will change depending on which characters you're playing with. So for example, Tails and Sonic, just like in Sonic 3, Tails can carry Sonic different locations. Or, because you have Emerald powers now as well, you can use each other's powers to get each other out of a tight spot, so that's very cool. How did you decide for local player only? and could online be added in the future. Because the game is so fast, even one frame you can move so far in the level, we didn't want to put this feature in where there would be lag, and then people wouldn't have fun because of the technical requirements. So we wanted to keep it to that local shared experience, which is fair if like the online would have like kind of hampered the overall game. That would have been a big topic of conversations. Like, yeah, there's online, but it's awful and ruins the, the game. I'm glad they're sticking to what they know can make work, but obviously I think we'd all like to see it in the future. Why did it take so long for Amy to be playable in a 2D Sonic, and how did you go about deciding how she should play? Having classic Amy be a playable character was something we always wanted to do, even during the Sonic Mania development days. There was talk about how we could put her in, but we couldn't get it done in time. However, we have worked on putting her into Origins Plus release, which is something we worked with headcanon on. For Superstars, we really want to work on a unique moveset for Amy and to make her different from the other characters. For example, if there's an enemy with spikes, even if you're in a balled up state, when you hit them, you're going to take damage. But Amy uses an object she's not touching the enemy herself to destroy it. She's using her hammer so she can defeat enemies that other characters can't. So there are elements of Amy that are unique to her and maybe players will have an easier experience with her. And then our final question here, with Samba Day Amigo and 2D Sonic making a return, what are the chances of Sonic Team's other franchises coming back to life, such as Nights into Dreams or burning rangers. I can't say yes to anything right now. These days I'm a creative officer for Sonic the Hedgehog, so I'm totally focused on that side of the business, so I can't really speak for anyone else, but Sonic Team in Japan has been ramping up and hiring lots of people recently, and they have more people than ever, so there may be some future where you'll be hearing about those kinds of titles. But that was all very interesting. It's so great to get a behind the scenes look at Sonic Superstars, what we can expect from the game, kind of Azuka's mindset going into this. I've been loving everything I've been hearing from Azuka lately when it came to Frontiers, when it's coming to this. I'm just 
so pumped for Superstars. I have so much confidence in this. The fact that Azuka and Oshima-san, this doesn't even seem like a game that was like made out of greed. Like, oh, we need a new Sonic game for 2023. Has that played a role? I'm sure Sega wants a new Sonic game every year. And trust me, as a fan, I want a new Sonic game every year. But it seemed like a game that was birthed from like what they said, a drinking party. They just got together, started talking again, and they were like, you know what, this is something I'm passionate about and want to do. Let's make it together. And they're making it happen. And it looks amazing. The fans are excited for it. And we should be getting a lot more information on it soon. As I said, this is a very, very long interview. So I don't want to take up any more of your time, but this is where I pass it off to you and ask what you think. What do you think of what Azuka-san had to say about the behind the scenes process, about how Sonic Superstars came to be, some of the things we can expect from it? I want to know your thoughts because I'm so pumped for this game, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are. Feel free to follow my social media links to my Twitter and Instagram in the description below. You can follow those behind the scenes on my life, Fukushante, and all things Sonic the Hedgehog. But most importantly, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. This is the number one destination on YouTube for all things Sonic, whether it's video games, TV shows, movies, compass, merchandise, and more. We talk about it all. The game is coming out in fall of this year, potentially October. We're not really sure about the whole release date situation going on right now. Point is, it's still a ways out, but it's not that far out. And there's still a lot more info to be released on the game. So to be the first to hear about all things Sonic Superstars, in addition to other things coming up this year, like the Knuckles TV show or Sonic Prime, or maybe some other surprises that might be in store, this is the spot to be, as I'm sure all of you guys who are watching this channel already know by now. But if you're not, once again, we'd love to have you join our family because I love all of you so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Wonder what you want right now, wonder what you want right now You should be proud of it, you should be proud of it